Good morning, everybody. So today's topic, I am late. I'm late, late, late. And thank goodness, I guess I, I guess I must have motivation because I don't feel like I have very much motivation today. But I must have motivation because I'm here. So, um, yeah, I was just up, up and down, up and down all night long with two little kids. One that was having nightmares and the other one has ant bites right here on the palm of his hand. We were at the park playing the other day and he decided to play in an ant pile. So, um, not very good. So he's in a lot of pain because that's all festered up and nasty and stuff and hurting him. So I've been up and down putting medicine on hands and cradling bad dream boy. Um, so, yeah. And then my alarm went off this morning and I was like, oh, 5.45. No, I don't want you to come. No, no, not 5.45. And I went ahead and I turned it off and I laid there and I was doing my gratitudes. And that's honestly the last thing I remember. I was doing my gratitudes. I was like, thank you for all the with all the beautiful experiences that will come into my life today or something like that. And then I was like, <laughs> out, out cold. And then something startled me in my dream and startled me awake. And I was like, whoa. And I looked at my clock and it was 6.20. And I'm like, fuck, fuck, okay. So I jumped out of bed and ran down the stairs said hey to a kid who's getting ready to go to school and I'm like I'm late I'm late I'm late I felt like the rabbit in Alice in Wonderland I'm late I'm late I'm late for a very important date and I'm uh, like okay what's my what's what's my topic for today and I'm like well motivation where's your motivation right where's your motivation and here's the thing about motivation and kind of like this morning, it's one of those things, you know, I, I'm not a big believer in, in balance. I, I think balance is bullshit. I'm more about harmony because if you think about life, things are never balanced. We're always trying to get balanced and that causes us a lot of frustration, a lot of suffering, a lot of pain instead of just finding our harmony and getting in the flow and doing things that way. So... I love um, James Arthur Ray's statement of balance is bullshit because I'm like, yes, balance is bullshit. And then I can't remember what her name is. Horrible, horrible. I should, I, no preparing this morning at all. I mean, I never really prepare, but normally I grab a quote or something. Did not do that this morning, guys. Um, so I'll have to look up this woman's name, but she uh, she's the author of uh, the five second rule, I believe it's called. And she talks about that you can change your whole world in five seconds and, and that it, you, you make, you have to make these decisions in five seconds and that motivation is bullshit. The motivation when, after going through her stuff and everything, I was like, you know, I agree. Motivation is bullshit. We're looking for things in our life to motivate us. Like, so once again, here we are giving, giving our power over to somebody else. Mel Robbins, thank you, Addison. Um, so we look at, at we, we're giving our power over to somebody else, something else, because we're looking outside ourselves to, um, to get this motivation inside of us. So, you know, it's like, well, when this happens or when that happens, then, then I'm going to be motivated. Then I'm going to do it. Then I'm going to, then I'm going to, then I'm going to get up, right? The reality is, is that I got startled and I had to make like a, I was just like, I'm out, right? I did not even think about it. I already done my grat gratitudes, fell asleep to them again. So I'm just like, I bounced out of bed. It was five seconds. I was like, what time is it? Oh shit. And then I jumped up out of bed and hey, good morning, Michael. And jumped up out of bed. And I was like, I made that decision to 
have motivation in that moment to take it up to, you know, cause I could, I could still be laying in bed sleeping, right? I don't have any place to be this morning. Um, other than maybe snuggled up next to my pillow. Sounds good. Okay. Bye. No, no. Um, but you know, it, it was an, it's an inside, it's an inside thing. It's an inside job of finding that motivation. But when we constantly are looking for, for, you know, things to, to motivate us, then we're always giving our power outward. We're always looking outside of ourselves for when this happens, when that happens. So basically we're just sitting here going, and this is, this is true. Like, oh, well, when I, when I find the motivation to do that, just to know, I haven't had the motivation to do that yet. I'm just not very motivated around that. I don't really know how I feel about it. Okay, do you want the result or not? Quite literally. Do you want what you claim you want or not? So if, if it's like, well, no, I really do want, you know, A, B, C, D, whatever that thing is over there, then fucking get up and get motivated, man. Like, just find your motivation. Go do it. Start the project. Start the routine start doing the practices, get your ass up out of bed and go do it. It's just, you know, don't go, you're waiting, you're looking. It's like, you're, don't look for something that's, that's only inside yourself. It's, it's right here. It's like, Oh, you don't have to go any further than right. Oh, right here. Here it is. Oh, but that's not really motivation. I don't really feel like doing that. You need to do one, two, three to get this. So what you waiting for? It's like, do you want the last, this, the next five years to look like the last five years? Cause if you can sin, consistently just sit there and wait for motivation to come to you, then you're not going to get it. You're just not going to get it. It will never show up. Motivation, much like a good man is never going to knock on your door and say, Hey, I'm here. And just appear out of nowhere for you and just like pop, here you go. No, you actually have to go take action and, and make certain things happen. You have to actually go and do motivation will come with action. But when you go and you decide I am worth it, I do want it. I'm going to go now, even though I feel like crap. I'm going, even though I'm tired, I'm going, even though there's a million and one naysayers out there, I'm, I still want this. I'm doing it. Even though it feels like whatever, you know, that the world out here is saying, no, my desire is so great. And I believe that I can do this. Or maybe you don't have a whole lot of belief and maybe you just need to push through and get your ass out of bed and go and do it. Because here's the thing, like I was laying up there this morning, I'm like, oh, 5.45, no, no, not another day of 5.45. Who signed me up for this crap? Oh, I did. <sighs> okay. Okay. I'm up. I'm up. I'm not up. I'm asleep. Okay. Second round. I'm up. Yes, I'm up. It wasn't even a thought of I'm up. It was just like, fuck, I've got to go. I've got to go. I've got to go. I've got to go. Yes, I have my ass on the line to a degree because I have, you know, I, I, I'm committed to this process of making sure that I have conscious coffee every single day. And once I'm committed to something, I'm like committed to something. But I'm one of those people that once I get in there, I'm just like, and I'm, I'm on it and it's hard for me to let go of it. But once, if you have something that you really, really, truly want and you're not finding the motivation to go get it, then I guess the, the gist of, of today's conscious coffee is, is just kind of like the truth bomb of motivations not coming to you. You've got to go to the motivation. You've got to go and get the ball rolling. And once that ball is rolling, whether you claim you feel like it or not, if 
if this thing that you want is in alignment to you, then the only way, only way that it's going to come to you, that you're going to manifest it, that you're going to create it, that you're going to have it, that you're going to enjoy it, is for you to get your own snowball rolling. So get out there and just start moving along. Take those little steps. And much like um, Mel Robinson in her, her book, Five Second Rule, um, she talks about, you know, like you, you change your whole world in five seconds because if you basically just take a breath, and realize that, you know, like you have the choice. Nobody's ever been making you do anything. None of us are forced to do anything. We can choose to not do anything, right? Right? We can choose to not do anything. We can choose to do something. But what we, um, oh, I just got a super kiss. Ooh, super kiss. <laughs> um, what we have to do is in that five seconds, it's quite literally like the five seconds. If you just lay there and you're like, Oh, like what I should have done this morning. Although I did what I did. Right. Um, wait, what I should have done as I was like starting to drift off was go, oh, you know, one, although I probably have fallen asleep in truth, I probably would have fallen asleep. So the second round, I did not even count. I just jumped, but it probably was five seconds. But when you're into this state where you're like, should I, shouldn't I, I don't really feel motivated. I don't really feel confident about this. I don't know if I can make it happen. I don't know if it's the right move. I don't, you know, like I really don't feel like it. I just don't feel like it. And that's a lot of the times. Like if you get serious with yourself, a lot of the times we make decisions because we say we don't feel like it. And what we're saying is not necessarily that we're out of alignment to it, that it's not something that we want, that it feels negative to us. It's, it's more, I just am too lazy to go do it. So we can really want something, but we can be really lazy and wanting to just be passive to get it and not realizing that we actually have to go and do to get, okay? And anybody who watches my conscious coffees knows that my form of do does not necessarily mean that you have to go and like really get out there and hustle a massive amount. Do you have to hustle on something? Absolutely. It doesn't matter what it is. You do have to take physical action for things, but that physical action is really not that big of a deal. You're going to want to take the physical action once you start doing the, the internal work that you need to do. But motivation is it, it's a decision and it's just that five seconds of, you know, like, all right, I really, I'm really feeling lazy this morning. I'm really, really feeling lazy this morning. I really don't want to like, ugh, no, I don't want to get up. I don't want to do this. Da, da, da. And you go, no, do I want the big picture? Do I want what is actually out there and, and, you know, available to me? Sorry, I'm wondering where my dogs are. Um, where, what, what I really, really want. Then you just go, all right, ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, go. Jump out of bed, go out the door. Make that, you know, text that commitment text to somebody. Send that commitment email to somebody. Speak, just start vocalizing, start getting it out. And this is, if you notice, like there's so many things that we go, Oh, I wish I had done that. I wish I had said that. I wish I had did that. I wish I had made that move. I wish I had made that said, you know, made that commitment. I wish I had just put my foot out a little bit fur further. I wish I had just taken that step. So looking back with 2020 vision, we know exactly what we should have done. We know that we should have just taken that step, whatever that step is. But how often how many times in your life can you look back and say, say that, like, I wish I had done that. I wish I had seen, I wish I had paid attention to the messages that I was getting and I had done that thing that I was feeling I should do, but I was actually kind of just too lazy to do because I was comfortable. I was comfortable, so I just didn't do it. 
And you know what? When you're comfortable and when you're at peace or you're in a state of boredom or just this like comfort, like there's nothing seriously fantastic going on and there's nothing ick going on either. You're just like in this comfy limbo state. It's all cushy and soft and, and, and nice. That's a dangerous, dangerous state. A lot of people get stuck there and then they spiral down from there because if you just hang out in that limbo state and you don't go and make your own motivation and take that step, then often things will go backwards for you. And if you want it to go forwards, that's where you need to go. I'm going and I'm going, oh, you know, I'm really not like full of energy, but I'm going to make the conscious decision right now to move forward. Because if I sit here in this, in this comfort in too long, then something's going to crawl up from down below and grab me and pull me into a negative ground. It's going to pull me backwards. So I'm, I'm going to get the motivation to move forward. I'm going to get the motivation to keep going this way. I'm going to go boom, boom, boom. And you just make that call and you go, whatever it is, make the call and go, take the plunge, jump. That's what motivation is. It's a form of just jumping off the cliff and having faith, jumping off the cliff and having faith. Now, did you guys just see that? Like something just like went up on the side. I was watching my videos the other day and I've noticed that there's like, I got spirit junk flying around behind me. I don't know. I keep seeing things in my videos. It's kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to go back afterwards and like be trying to blow that, blow that up. Give this, give my video to my friend and be like, can you blow that up? Tell me what that was. Was that just like a bug, a moth in my house? Or was it actually maybe an orb or something? Like seriously, I just saw that. I'm, I think, yeah. <laughs> Yes, several times. Yeah, yeah, it's a trip. Anyway, um, where was I? Uh, <laughs> spirit floaties sidetracked me. Okay, I'm a ditz in the morning. Um, shoot, somebody help, help, help me. I don't know where I left off. Um, <laughs> so. So motivation, right? Motivation. What are we talking about? Oh my gosh, what was my last statement? This is funny. Um, <laughs> welcome to Conscious Coffee when I don't do any prep work at all. Not that I do a lot of prep work for anything. You know, and there you go. You don't, there, I guess there's my, there's my lead in, right? You can't prep for motivation. Your prep is that you just go do. It is, and it, it's leaping off the cliff. See, I got it back. Okay. So, there's no preparation for it. You feel called to do something. You want it. Then you feel some resistance in there. Fear, doubt kind of kicks in. You go, huh, I don't know. How do I feel about this? But you feel completely in alignment to it. You recognize that fear, doubt for what it is. The ego, Satan, trying to hold you back, trying to keep you in that crab pot so that, you know, so that you're not moving outward you're not actually going and getting what you want you feel overly comfortable i mean the best prison on the planet is the prison of comfort and what do we all try to do we all want to be comfortable we are told that it is the human dream to just be comfortable i'm going to be comfortable now and that's what my goal is, is to be comfortable. It's a fucking prison. It's a prison. Comfort doesn't get you anywhere, okay? Comfort mm -hmm. is not something to strive for. Do you want to be safe, secure? Do you want to, you know, be stable? Do you want to have more than enough with plenty left over? Okay, fine. Those real things are all great. Comfort, though, comfort is just locking yourself up it's like there's no adventure in comfort there's no growth in comfort there's no healing in comfort there's no there's no finding your bliss finding your joy just this bliss and joy sound like comfortable words no they're not comfortable they're exciting 
Is it comfortable for a little kid to go to bed on Christmas Eve and think about Santa coming with his reindeer and landing on the roof and then coming down the chimney and, and putting presents on your tree? Is that kid comfortable in their bed? No, they're flopping around, they're tossing all over the place. They might get out of their bed and sneak around and look down the stairs and like, oh, this is why you find kids asleep on the staircase. Yeah, because they get themselves into uncomfortable situations trying to achieve what they really, really want, which is to catch Santa delivering presents. The enthusiasm, the excitement, the joy, the, you know, just that anticipation of their dream coming true. When was the last time you felt like that? When was the last time you felt like that? You have to get motivated. You gotta just go lump, jump and leap off and go do and say, but why comfort? Like you can have moments of comfort every now and then. What moments of comfort? Those moments of comfort should be like when you're when you're with when you're with you know, hey Lori, um, when you're with you know a loved one. You're snuggling your kids. You're snuggling with a, with your with your partner. You're hanging with your friends. Those are comfortable moments. They are. They're comfortable moments. And you eat those up. But if you're going for just living in this state of like, I'm comfortable, you're literally, you know, just lock and key. You, you're not going to move any further. You're not getting anywhere. There is no motivation in comfort. Comfort is just the opposite side of the coin of boredom and most people who get comfortable are also bored okay why because comfort's boring okay it's boring and then you become the teenager that we all dread the teenager that says I'm bored I'm bored and what do us parents do with our teenagers that say I'm bored go do something go find something to do Go read a book, go hang with some friends. Hey, here's a list of chores. Here's this, here's that, da da da. Find something. Wah, you're bored. You're bored. Wah, you're comfortable. Go do something. Go do something. And that is exactly for us adults who are wanting more in life. If you're striving for comfort, then you're not going to find any motivation there. And the only way out of comfort and boredom is to not look for motivation, but to become motivation. And that's what you have to do. Just become motivation. Just go do. Just do, do. You know what you need to do. I love it when people are like, I don't know what to do. Well, if you were going to tell somebody else, give somebody else some bullet points as to what to do, and they were in this situation, what would you, what, what should they do? Oh, well, they should go blah, 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 blah. And that's a great way to look at it. Like, if you were telling a friend what to do, what would you tell them to do? Now go do that. Go do that. Well, I would tell them that they should do this, and I would tell them, all right, there you go. Stop thinking about it. Go do. Huh? Well, I don't have any motivation to do that. Tough shit. Go do it anyway. Go do it anyway. Motivation will come. There you go. There's your motivation. Your motivation is, if you don't do it, then... You're going to be locked up in this prison of comfort, which is going to lead to boredom, which is going to pull you back down into the crab pot and get you nowhere in a hurry. And then the next five years is going to look exactly like the last five years. And well, you didn't like that. So change it. Just change it. Right? Heard a quote that goes something like this, but like it. Also living is this week. Yes. Yes. So... Um, yeah, so there you go. I don't know. Any comments, observations, complaints? Bite off more than you can chew. Then chew. Yes, yes. You know, um, ooh, time out. Let me grab a book. You just made me think of something. Else. Oh. If I can find the book, I did not out anything when I got home. I was in a funk yesterday and I was just like, fuck it. I know, like I'm just not doing anything. And I tried to do something and then I sat on my floor with my kids 
and I was trying to put together a course, and then I just went, I'm not, I'm not into this right now. <laughs> just not into it right now. And that meant that I really wasn't in alignment, and I only want to put out good content, not bad content on courses for sure. It's not something you can just, um, but you just made me, let me see. Bear with me, guys. Um, John Mason, he has, I don't know if I can find it. Hey, Bubba, baby. Um, daughter's going to school. Huh? Oh, the produce out there? Okay. My produce is here. I get produce deliveries every other week, so organics, organics delivered to my door. I love it. Um, don't have to shop that much. It means I don't have to go out and deal with everything. One less thing off my off my list of things I need to do. Shoot, I don't know where this is, but um, John Mason, enemy called average, and let go of whatever makes you stop. Both of these books I read when I was 19, 20. Um, my now ex-husband was in financial services and partnership was a big deal in the company that he worked for. So us wives, we would come to meetings once a week and it was all about like I even got best partner award and all this different stuff for being most supportive partner and yay, yay, right, yay. Um, yay me. And I, I was trying to, I think I was trying to do conscious coffees then because I was trying to any, any opportunity I could get, I would be teaching on a lot of this, this kind of stuff. But, um, I found John Mason back then and he just has, I love these little nuggets as he calls them. And I'm not finding the one that I remembered. I guess I should like maybe read the whole book again somewhere and figure out. Anyways, but he talks about just that right there. That you've got to, you've got to bite off more than you can chew. You've got to make that plunge. You've got to make that statement. You've got to just like really go forward and, and, and have faith that you can handle it and take that plunge, take that step, get like, take on that big project. I mean, some of the things that I have on my list, I'm like, holy shit, like, I don't know if I can do that. And I have worthiness issues just like anybody. And I have all this doubt and I don't like yesterday I did that truth share that, you know, like I felt like dog crap yesterday. And this morning I'm still obviously like I didn't get a good night's sleep. And then I wasn't feeling good yesterday. And I was like, you know, how do you keep going? Well, I have, I'm, it's that I choose again, always. I'm always choosing again. I'm always going, all right, you know, no, I'm not always 100%. No, I'm not always ready to just like go and be and do and experience and, and just be turned on and excited. I'm not always turned on. I am, you know, I spend a lot of my time not turned on. And I, the difference between, me and a lot of other people is that I've learned that it's nobody else's doing. It's nobody else's responsibility to turn me on, to motivate me, to save me, to fix me, to, you know, to do anything for me. There is, they, they, they can't. I can ask for help when I need help, but ultimately nobody else is going to get me to do the things that really matter. Okay, I have to do that. That's an inside job. I have to do it. It's it's a choice. So choose to be turned on. Choose to go do things that excite you. Choose to to tackle you know projects that feel like they're purpose driven. That you know like yes, there's butterflies and yes, that's like whoo, that's a like I can't believe I'm saying yes to this, but it's exciting. Like, oh, like, oh, that's exciting. There's a turn on there. There's some excitement there. There's like, wow, look at, look at that. There's so much yumminess there, but I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm good enough for that. I don't know if I, I really 
should or could do that? Well, you're not going to know if you don't say yes to it and test it out. And then, well, but I don't have the mo really the motivation to do that because I don't really know what to do. Trust me. If you just go do it and you say yes to it and you put your ass on the line for it, then all of a sudden, only say yes to the things that are in alignment to what you really truly want long term. Does it line up with your dreams, your goals, your desires? Does it line up with those? Because if you say yes to things that are taking you the opposite direction, it's not going to do you a damn bit of good. If you're saying yes just for the adrenaline rush, don't do that. Just don't do that. It's not It's not worth it because that's like, all right, and it's over. You know, that's that's like the average guy out there in bed. It's over in three seconds. So just just don't. Don't say yes to it. Like, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. The sex and relationship coach, right? It's like, but seriously, you know, it, it's, if some, if you're not going to be able to get into it and enjoy it and, and love it and really, you know, get in that flow and be able to get into the, into it and connect and be a yes all the way through, then don't go do it. Don't do it just to say you did it. Don't do it just to go, yeah, I pushed up against that wall and I pushed through it. Do it because on the other side of it is something that you really do want. You can see the growth that you're going to get from it and it's not just that adrenaline rush. Do it because your heart at the, at the deepest part of your heart is, is turned on and excited and wants it and it's like yes you know like it scares me a little bit but that's the excitement is it dangerous no this is just fear that i'm coming up against it's not dangerous it's not bad for me it's not bad for anybody else it's actually going to push me to grow to experience to to all this different stuff and in my growing i'm going to be able to actually receive more i'm going to be able to give more all that good stuff if you're doing it for those reasons because it's going to expand you in a positive way and you're just button up against fear, then go. As long as it's in alignment, then say yes and just say yes and the motivation will come. Say yes and the motivation will come. And that's exactly what you have to do. Exactly what you have to, You know, I signed up for, I, I felt compelled to go on a mission trip and I've got to take my, and something inside me is like, I have to take my 12 year old son with me. So I spent the last year, year and a half looking for mission trips out there. Finally found one through a friend, of course. Like, I didn't have to go past my own backyard. That's how it always is, right? It's like, right, everything that you need's right there. So I, I, I'm just like, I, I haven't, I, I don't know what to do with it. What the heck have I just signed up for? Like, if I actually think about it, I'm going, ooh. Like, I don't know what the heck. I was late. I went to my first mission trip meeting the other week. And they're talking about, you know, the dentist station and the, and the giving vaccinations and vitamins and, um, sight, the, the working with people for vision and then also front desk and, you know, it's down to Guatemala. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> I'm not bilingual. I'm like, you know, and then they're talking about all this different stuff and I'm going, oh my God, like. I have no skills for this. I have zero skills for this. Whew. Like, okay, what did I just step into? I don't even know. Now I can let that stop me. I can go, all right, you know, that was a nice idea that I had, but I don't know if I can actually do that. I don't know if I can handle watching somebody get their teeth pulled out and the blood. They were talking about these blood story, blood ooey gooey stories. I'm like, I'm not bad around blood, but I don't know exactly how I'm going to feel, especially if it's like a kid or something. And yeah, I was just like, and then sitting at the front desk and meeting everybody and, and taking everybody in, that sounds nice because then I could meet everybody that comes to the clinic and I don't know, just share a smile with them, you know, and kind of come back to the principles I believe in that sharing love and, and sharing that connection and just being the light and being able to love on people and, and share that. That sounds exciting. But then I'm like, oh crap, I don't speak Spanish and, 
and who knows what kind of computer system they have and, and all this stuff. I could actually scare myself enough to say no to a beautiful opportunity that's going to expand me and expand my son in different ways that I have no even no clue about, right? Like I just, but instead what it is is a listening to the inside. So there is this, this pull inside that has me captivated so much so that the fear and the doubt and the I'm not good enough statements that my ego throws at me that says, you know, no, you're, you're going to fail. You're going to fuck up. You're going to look stupid. You're not, you're, they're going to be like, oh my God, never take her on a mission again. Oh, this kind of stuff, you know, that kind of stuff that's coming in because that's there. That's there. And I have those thoughts. I'm like, yeah. I'm not scared about travel. I'm not scared about anything like that. I'm like, oh, that's all great and groovy. But I don't want to let my team down. So my fear is that I'm going to somehow let my team down. In that moment right there, do I allow the fear to overrule me and put me into bondage? Or do I go, it's the biting off more than you can chew and then chew? Or do I just decide to chew? Do I just ha find that motivation and go, you know what? I'm still going. I'm going to read that pamphlet that they gave me. I'm going to go and I'm going to read up on, on where we're going and I'm going to... I'm going to go and I'm going to do a little bit of research. I'm going to learn a few words of Spanish so that I'm not completely handicapped in this situation. I'm going to make sure that I get to all my meetings. I'm going to learn and really just be motivated to show up every step of the way. And when I'm not, when I'm feeling that fear, feeling that doubt, feeling that lack of worth, feeling whatever it is, I'm still going to go, yes. Yes to myself. Yes to this mission. Yes to this calling. Yes to this drive that I do feel inside. I'm not going to let that little light burn out. I'm going to actually get it to shine brighter by saying yes and by moving forward and not second guessing it. And if I do second guess it, I'm going to say, I see that ego. I see you trying to make me second guess. I see you trying to pull me back into that pot of, of crabs. I see that and I'm a no to that. I'm a fuck no to that. I'm a fuck yes. Fuck yes to saying yes. To myself to this dream to this desire to this forward forward moving i'm a yes i don't need somebody else to motivate me i don't need something else to motivate me because i am my own motivator i'm my own motivator because this desire is my motivator i want this thing this experience this growth more than i want the bondage of comfort and that's exactly where you have to get with anything. So I don't know what you're desiring. I don't know what you're wanting. I don't know what you're needing. Because needs play a role in this too. Why aren't your needs getting met? Probably because you're getting caught up in the bondage of average and ordinary. The bondage of those programs saying that that's all you can have. That you're just going to be paycheck to paycheck. That you're just going to have the health that you have. That you're just going to have the relationship that you have. That's all bondage. It's coming from here. That's it. That's it. Say no to that. Motivate your ass right now in this moment. Make that commitment this morning to motivate your ass to take that step. Whatever that step is. Stop waiting for somebody else to say, oh, that's a good idea. Just go do it. Go do it. Okay. So I'm going to shut up. I'm going to get off my soapbox now. Um, let me get off my soapbox and warm up my coffee because it got cold. And I guess go motivate myself to go do my meditation because that's actually that's not much motivation. I do that every day. <laughs> um, write my journal. But we'll see where my motivation takes me today. Um, what are those steps? What are those plunges? I hope that you commit to making some. I hope that you take that forward leap. And I hope that something in this crazy ass, um, what is it, Thursday, Thursday morning conscious coffee touched you in some way. If so, you guys probably know what I'm going to say next. Push the little share button at the bottom of the screen. Just push the little share button. Thank you for all the love that you guys have given. The comments, thank you, Lori and Addison. 
and I totally Michael and I'm not going to scroll up there I think there's somebody else saying hi um a good morning to all of you who who came on here and just push that little share button to help this conscious coffee or if you didn't like this conscious coffee and there's one that you like better go find it um and hit the share button on that because that's appreciated too facebook is kind of um suppressing all of us on here who do anything at all we're all getting suppressed it's the talk of of anybody doing anything on facebook like this um so the only way that we can really get that help is to have people actually share because that tells facebook that what we're doing is liked and well received and then they start to support us again so um if you can do that that would be wonderful and other than that, I will catch you later with Thoughtful Thursday post. Who knows what will be coming out of my mouth then. And then tomorrow uh, for this week's final Conscious Coffee at 6 a.m.-ish. Probably closer to 6 as long as my kids let me sleep. Um, but yeah, so I love you guys and I will catch you later. Have a fantastic, very motivated day.